Hello everybody, it's uh, Mary with Stamps and Lingers and this is a Saturday night video. It's seven o'clock Eastern time. So I think we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to just check off screen to the left to be sure that uh, we're transmittalating here. So just one second and we'll get going. I see I've got a couple of folks joining now. Hey Debbie, thanks for joining me tonight. I appreciate that. Let me see what we got over here. Okay, I see some, I see a blurry halflinger, so must be happening. All right, I got some folks on. Hi, Nance, how are you? Appreciate you watching. All right, my uh, screen isn't refreshing very good over here, so I'll try again. Maybe there's sunspots. Yeah, that's it. There's sunspots. Well... So somebody who is on, tell me if you're seeing video and hearing me, because I have a blurry, frozen... Oh yeah, well, it looks like maybe it's working. Okay, so Facebook is playing games with me, but that's okay, because that's what they do. All right, well, let's go ahead. Hey, Susan and Faith and Tina, appreciate you joining. Um, oh, good. Thanks, Nance. I appreciate that feedback. Hi, Roz. All right. Thank you, Debbie. Thanks, Kathy. Hi, Mary. Okay. So it looks like, hi, Pam. Looks like we're transmitting even regardless of what my computer is telling me on the left here. So the card that I gave you the sneak peek of this morning is this, and it uses the beautifully braided set. Now in the mini catalog, which is what this is in, it is bundleable, bundleable, with this uh, really fun border punch, which is called the braided border. Uh, I didn't use it on this this card. I wanted to, but I just couldn't find a way for it to, uh, you know, really work. So I decided to not push my luck. So just know you can get this fun um, punch and it's kind of cool. It does line up pretty well. You punch the first one and then you can just pull it out and line up the braids and punch the next one and, and it, it works really quite well. All right, so this is a photopolymer set, and um, it'll be around until the end of the mini catalog. So what I did, I saw a technique out on the internet, and I'd be darned if I can find it again. So if you're the person who did one of these once, and I'm not giving you credit, please know it's just because I cannot find the card again that inspired me to make this. Um, but I saw it and I loved the fact that it had color popped up, embossed color popped up on a black background. And it turns out, if you don't like the fussy cut, you might as well just hit stop right now because there is some fussy cutting. All of these flowers are fussy cut. Um, but it's okay and I think it's actually worth it. So I've got the, uh, this is embossed in gold. And then I have a sentiment that I cut with the Stitch So Sweetly Framelits, or uh, dies. And it's actually this one right here is the one that I used. So you'll see that is there. And I just kept the black on black color scheme. And I'm gonna set this aside. I, you'll be glad to know, I think you'll be glad to know that I've done a little cutting ahead of time. Thanks, Karen. Thank you, Alicia. Cutest four-month-old mini Aussie puppy. Oh, boy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't want to know. Mm -mm. Nope. Do not want to know. All right. So this is, like I said, this is gold embossing. And then this sentiment is embossed with um, shimmery white embossing powder. Okay. So we're going to play with two. And I'm going to do something that's very dangerous. I'm going to do heat embossing on camera. So we're going to see how well that works. Hey, Kathy. Thank you for joining Thank you, Pam. Thanks, Kathy. And then on the inside, I just embossed it again. And I've colored it with blends. And we're going to talk about coloring embossed images with blends a little bit. And just put a simple thank you. And then I did embossing again on the envelope. And I used a little bit of the uh, Rococo Rose DSP from the 2019-2021 DSP pack. All right. So let's get started. Okay, all of this will be on my blog tomorrow, so you do not need to make any notes of uh, um, sizes or card cuts or anything like that. Hi, Mary. Glad you could join. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Diane from Colorado. All right, so this is our sentiment, and with any luck, it will uh, emboss perfectly the first time, and I, we won't have to do it again. I have a whisper white piece for the inner liner. I have two petal pink mats at four by five and a quarter. 
And then I have a Rococo, a Rococo Rose card base, four and a quarter by 11, scored and folded at five and a half. And then obviously an envelope. Okay, so we're gonna start with our Stamp of Empotamus. And I'm going to emboss my black card front with gold, okay? So I'm gonna pick this up and we're gonna put him right here. But it's really important when you're embossing on black, you you really don't, it's not very forgiving. There's no doubt about that. So definitely use your embossing buddy. And you know, if your embossing buddy stops making white powder, just give it a little pat and it'll come right out, okay? But the, the better job you do with that, um, thank you, Russ. The better job you do with that, the less brushing with your handy dandy paintbrush you're gonna have to do when you get ready to emboss. So all I'm doing is I'm just laying this across the card front like so. Get it lined up and then we'll pick it up. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna do it right there. I'm gonna do it out here like this, right there. All right, let's 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 try that again, shall we? I'm just going to put it right there, and then I'm going to get my magnets down and pick him up. Okay, now I'm going to pet, pet, pet my stamp with my Versamark ink. The nice thing about the black is once you put the Versamark down, you, you actually can see it, which is kind of nice. Oh, it's cold in Florida? Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's just freezing, right? Okay, so we're just going to press down, make sure we get a nice image. And we'll pick that back up. And I'm going to pull my magnets away. And then just make sure that I have what I think is going to be a good image. Yeah, it will be fine. All right, let's put some embossing powder on here. We're going to set this aside so that I don't get embossing powder, you know, too far afield. Because it's pretty easy to do that. And embossing powder is kind of like... Florida beach sand. It goes everywhere and gets in everything. All right. I didn't get, the, you can see that I did not get the best image right there, so I didn't do a good job. But because of the way this card design is, I think it's going to be fine. I think we'll be okay. Let me put a little more powder right there. If I can't make it do what I need it to do, I'm going to turn it over here in just a second. Yeah, I think I'm going to turn it over. Hang on a second, because I don't like that, and I want to like it. You know what I'm saying? So hang on just a second. I'm going to get a little picky on you. Going to get a little picky on you, people. Okay? Because that's, you know, how I do. I'm not going to tell you how many pieces of cardstock I go through to make a card. Just throwing it out there because I do get a little picky. Uh, there's no doubt about it, I do get a little picky. But you'll be glad to know I have fussy cut all but one of these flowers, so you only have to watch for a little while. Uh, it's warm in Sydney, I would think probably, although, yeah, it's summer there, isn't it? But you're not on fire, so that's a good thing, right? I think not being on fire is probably a very good thing. All right, we're gonna get a little embossing going here, a little embossing buddy. And I'm gonna put him back out. See, that was that was a technical mistake that I made on that first go. If I had put it somewhere and paid closer attention to where it was lined up, when I realized I had a bad versa mark, I could have gone back, right? But I didn't, and so we're gonna do a better job this time. I'm also not gonna pick up my cardstock until I have confirmed that I'm happy with my stamped image. Now I had some problems right in there, so I'm just gonna give that a good push. So I was thinking about this as I was making making a card earlier. I don't know, I, I am married to a construction person and 
if, you know, I, I see a blueprint and I'm like, okay, if this says that this piece of wood is going to be two feet long, by God, it's going to be two feet long. And he is more of the, along the line of most people who do construction is, you know, if you need two feet and that's what works, that's great. But if you need two feet and a quarter inch or one foot, 11 inches and maybe another smidge, that's what you use. You have a plan, you work towards the plan, but in the end, you, you have to make it fit and you have to make it come together. So what where I was going with that really obscure reference is this is paper and ink and you need to make it do what you need it to do. Okay, so I've left it in place and I'm kind of turning it. I can see my image is way better, way better, way more better than it was for the first go. So let's... Uh, Let's give this another shot, shall we? Yes, the, the Stamparatus makes doing what I just did much less scary. Okay, here we go again with some of my gold Florida beach sand embossing powder. I've noticed that the gold is particularly fine, which is good because it's a lot easier to, um, it gets, it, it's better for detailed images but it goes everywhere. And I can also tell you that if you inadvertently blow into your <laughs> into your Tupperware where all of your embossing powder is, oh, you're going to have embossing powder every which way from Sunday. All right, clean that up a little bit. Now I'm going to take my brush. These are two important tools. And I think I got like 27 brushes for 99 cents at the dollar store. So money cannot be your reason, right? Is there a rule of thumb for which direction the Stamparatus goes? Oh, you mean as in oppose this way versus this way? If if that's the question, then there isn't a rule of thumb other than what makes you the most comfortable. I, for some reason, I, maybe because I'm left-handed, or I'm right-handed, it just is more comfortable for it to be like this for me. I absolutely will use a panel like this if I'm doing multiple uh, multiple stamped images. So I'll have one over here and one on the, the, the top. But if I'm only doing one image and one plate, then I tend to stay on this side. So that's just me. It's whatever feels the most comfortable to you. All right, so I'm gonna just, I'm looking to see any stray little bits of embossing it absolutely is worth taking the time right now to be sure that's clear <laughs> because I can assure you once you emboss it ain't coming off not very easy although I did have a little luck with my um, Tombow eraser the other day never know where the corner should be yeah yeah so it's all it's totally up to you okay gonna get noisy hang tight sorry about the noise well, I mean, no, not really. You got to have noise to get embossing. That's just how it is. And we're going to get this, the magic of embossing here in just a second. In just a second, you're going to get to see that. Here, I'll hold it up so you can see the magic happen. Woo-hoo. I love this. It's like being a magician. Only we all know it's going to do its thing. All right, here we go. Yes, I'm going to fussy cut just for you because I know it's kind of a thing for you. You, know, you love it so much. All right, now before you get done with your embossing, you do want to be sure that it's all turned, if you will. I did some the other day and uh, I had not gotten all of it done and I brushed my big old fat finger over the top of it and it went crazy, crazy. Okay, so that's the card front. And we're going to, I do like to let it cool a little bit because sometimes that embossing is a little bit, you know, soft until it's cool. And then uh, let's go ahead and just use a little liquid glue and put it on our petal pink card base. Shall we? Shall we? I say we shall. Yes, oh yes, I say we shall. 
So I had a doctor's report. I mean, I had the lab report. And if, in fact, the only litmus for gout is uric acid, uric, uric, mm -hmm, uric acid levels, then I don't have gout. If there's some other thing and you can have gout with having normal uric acid levels, then I don't have it. I don't know what I've got. I know this knuckle hurts still. All right, there we go. So that is ready, and I'm going to set it aside. Now, before we joined, yes, it's a pretty stamp set. Uh, okay, here we go. So before you came on, I stamped this same image again on a piece of scrap Whisper White, and I embossed it in gold, just like we did here, but on white. I've cut out all but this flower, so really all I did, you can see them here, is I fussy cut so that the, it's kind of like what, what we're really doing is paper piecing here, but with embossed pieces, okay? So I've already cut these flowers, and I'm going to kind of give you a tip. I didn't do this one because I wanted to be able to show you what we want to do, and also uh, because, you know, if I don't fussy cut on screen, then it's like it didn't happen, right? Exactly. Okay, so when you fussy cut these, it's kind of nice because you can just leave, I just want you to leave the embossed portion on, okay? So just go right at the edge of the embossed image, and it's really pretty easy. And then when we get done, I'm going to come back, and it's handy that I have a black card front. I'm going to use my black Stampin' Right marker and color the edges. And I can't see any comments right now because I have to hold my mouth just right so that I can talk, breathe, and fussy cut without destroying my image because I don't want to destroy my image or my reputation as a fussy cutter. You know, these are important things. If I ever decide to run for office, I'm gonna run on a fussy cutting platform. Okay, now let me show you something. On these flowers right here, let me put this down before I do something stupid. On these flowers right here, you can see this black portion is actually the stem of the flower. So I cut that out of the emboss because I don't want that colored. I want it to be black when I put my flower on there. Okay, so you can see I am getting ready to cut that white piece out away from my fussy cut piece. But I'm still leaving the embossed line in on my fussy, on my piece. Did, did that make sense? We'll sh I'll show you in just a second. Now I'm gonna cut right across here, but I'm gonna cut this into two little pieces. Now, I can tell you, it is much easier to color these before you fussy cut them, okay? I, why I'm not doing it that way is because I don't want you to have to sit and listen. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out what is a stem here, and I'm gonna leave this emboss line on and that emboss line on the other side, okay? Because you're piecing and I didn't want to lose a piece. I don't want to lose a piece. I know, I know it does, Robbie. But I've come to the conclusion, as old as I am, I've already done quite a bit of damage. <laughs> so I'm sure that riding and flying and all of those other things have all contributed to my downfall. Okay, now, somewhere, somewhere around here, here's my black Stampin' Right marker. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the brush end and I'm going to go n right straight across the edge. And that's going to kind of dull any mistakes that I've made and make it blend in to the background. Okay? You've seen me do this before. Uh, normally I use the same color of ink as I have stamped the image. But in this case, I am coming back with black so that it, the edge kind of disappears on the cut. Okay, so let's go ahead and just get this one. And then I have to do the other fussies. And then I'll color this and show you my little tip. Because you do have to be a little careful. Um, 
also gives you a headache. It can be. Not flowers, but leaves. Hmm. I'm not sure what you mean there. Do you think these are leaves, not flowers? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. I don't know what they are. To me, they look like something that would be on Pandora from Avatar. That's what I think they look like. Especially colored like this. I mean, you know, there's a lot of mint macaron and pretty peacock flowers in the world, right? No, but there are on Pandora. I'm just saying. Just saying. I remember seeing them. And there was like a tree that glows and stuff. So I'm pretty sure these are Pandorian. These are gold, shiny Pandorian flowers. Probably with the souls of departed Pandorians. I think. Pretty. Def oh, it's ginkgo. There it is. This is ginkgo biloba. No wonder I feel like I, my memory is so good right now. <laughs> yeah. No, not so much. I'm getting a couple of cute little captions for Finn's picture. I enjoyed seeing them. Karen right now, I think, has the most accurate one. Uh, what's in that bowl, Mom? What you got? What you got, Mom? You got food for the dog? Pretty, pretty sure you do. Okay, so I've colored all of these. Let me show you. I'm take, I'm gonna use my dark mint macaron Stampin' Blend, and my light, pretty peacock Stampin' Blend. It also says you are a riot, which I agree. <laughs> well, thank you. All right, so I'm going to first color the entire flower or leaf, whichever this foliage with the the mint macaron. If this was just a stamped image, I would just color. I would just color, 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 color. I'd use the brush image and just go and go and go. But the alcohol in these blends reacts with embossing powder, okay? So you need to be a little careful. Don't You don't have to get all head up and worried, but you're not gonna be scrubbing. You're gonna actually be coloring like you care about staying in the lines. So I'm using the bullet end and I'm just coloring the whole thing. Now you can see why I did those others ahead because we'd be here until Tuesday. We'd be here till Tuesday. Y'all would go on a break and have dinner and sleep and stuff and I'd be sitting here coloring. Coloring the ginkgo leaves. So I'm just coloring all of these in mint macaron to start with. And it is macaron, people. It is not macaroon. It's a cookie of French derivation, not the coconut thingy bobber. That's a macaroon. We're having macarons. You know, I don't know if I've ever actually eaten a macaron. I would like to eat a macaron. Oh, let's face it, actually, what I meant to say is I'd like to eat 27 macarons. And I'd like them to be mint. I'm not gonna lie, I'd like mint macarons. Speaking of mint, I just saw a very, very good recipe for mint brownies. It's got a brownie base, and then it's got mint buttercream frosting, and then it has a layer like this thick of chocolate ganache. I'm down with that. What does it do to the embossing? Diane, what it does is it tends to, uh, you know, when you, you've got your powder, you heat it up, and it gets solid and hard. The, this breaks it down a little bit and smears the embossed stuff the embossing powder so it kind of breaks it down and it it can be ugly you don't you really don't want it um so just be careful now in case you were thinking oh mary i wonder why you're not using your stamp and write marker well i did the first iteration with the stamping right marker stamp and write marker and it just doesn't it doesn't blend nice it isn't designed to do that um, and so I don't use it. Okay, so now I'm using, it. you'll be much happier using your Stampin' Blends and just being careful of the embossed image, okay? So this is the light, pretty peacock. Again, I'm using the bullet end. I'm not coloring every single line. I'm not coloring every other line. I want this to look a little more natural. I think if you colored every other um, blank space, it would look like it was striped, and I'd I don't think it really would be striped in nature. I mean, some things are striped, but maybe not quite as perfectly as this would be. Okay, so I'm just coloring these. 
like so. And every single one I do is different because, uh, you know, it's just not that critical. Do it until it makes you happy, right? Okay, so I think that's good there and we'll put a couple in there in its little piece. And then we're gonna put this together. We're gonna start putting together. We'll put it together. All right, first off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, some Rococo Rose, mint brownies, I'm ready, mm-hmm. I'm gonna take some of the Rococo Rose half-inch gathered ribbon and I'm gonna lay it across um, the card. And the only thing I'm really kind of concerned about is that I'm gonna be able to put my sentiment and have room between the flower and the bottom. And then I want my ribbon centered in the middle of the sentiment. So I'm gonna line it up like that and then pick up my sentiment, cut my ribbon. And then I'm going to just hold it like that and run a little bit of snail, maybe, maybe. Run a little bit of snail there and then lay the ribbon down. That's holding it kind of in place, right? Making sure it's straight. And then on the back, I'm gonna put a couple of glue dots and then we'll be ready to rock. We're almost there with this. Yay. See, this is really quite easy, actually. It took me longer to design it and come up. Oh my God, you guys, you should have seen me sitting here hemming and hawing. Because when I first made the card, I made the whole card, I had all of the leaves on, but um, I hadn't colored it. It was all white and gold and black. And I really, really liked it. But I was like, well, I'm going to try something a little different. I need to play with my Tombow thing here. Just a second. Where'd you go, Tombow thing? Is it right in front of me? There it is. Not sure what that is right there, but I don't like it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, now let me show you how we're going to hook the, uh, here are the flowers. First, we'll get them all where they belong. And you can start to see it. And you know what? You could absolutely just use liquid glue and put, put those in place and it would be perfectly pretty, right? But any opportunity to use some dimensionals is a good opportunity in Mary's book. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna use the black dimensionals, which how cool is it to have black dimensionals when you wanna play with black cardstock? Okay, 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 are you ready? I was so proud of this. I thought, oh my God, Mary, you're so clever. She said modestly. Okay, so I'm going to take some mini black Stampin' Dimensionals, and I'm just putting them, they're whole, because they're already mini, come on. Put them on the top of the flower, okay? And then I'm going to take a little liquid glue, and I'm putting it right at the base of the flower, like so. And then using my third hand, I'm going to set it in place, and I'm setting the, the end down first, okay, so that I can wiggle it and play with it. And it is where I need it to be, and so I'm holding it in place and pushing down just a little bit to let the uh, Stampin' Dimensionals come into play. And I'm just going to hold that there for a second. And you got a little time to fix it. Like that. And just hold it until the liquid glue takes hold. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. All right, and then repeat two or three more times. Thanks, Kathy. I was I was kind of tickled with it. I loved I loved the one that I saw online, and I'm really I'm really sorry I cannot remember who did it. But it was just clever as it could be, and I, I thought, I got to do that. And so I've not seen it again. So hopefully mine is at least as pretty as theirs was. All right, again, kind of just getting the bottom in place and letting that glue take hold before I really push down on the dimensional. 
And while it's doing that, it's sitting there thinking about what it's done and what it's gonna do, we'll just move along. Because I know you don't want to be here until the cows come home. Anybody know what time the cows come home? It's it's late, real late. All right. So anyway, I was doing this card and I did it. It was all white and I really liked it. But I wanted to play with the challenge where I needed mint macaron and pretty peacock. And I thought, well, I could color the flowers. And so I really went back and forth and back and forth. And I did a whole nother set. This is how anal I was. I had all of them adhered to the card front in white with the gold embossing. I did a whole nother set and colored them and then laid them over the top of them on and decided, did I want that? or not. That's just how weird. Okay, so this little tiny piece, I'm just adhering it in place with a little liquid glue, like that. Okay. All right, that one's done, so let's go ahead and get the rest done. Thank you, Holly. 9 p.m. sharp is when the cows come home? Okay. I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. Also, I turn into a pumpkin at 9. If anybody has ever been around me at 9, you know that I become a little bit goofy at nine o'clock because I am done. I am done. All right. So we're just moving along. I, I really, I'm not going to lie, I love this card. And I think it's so cool with the little, the little edges, the little flutes popped up like that. <laughs> I'm not, I think it was a pretty, pretty good idea, really. Mm -hmm. I like it. And I love the gold, the jewelry colors on the black. I just think it's pretty. It's pretty. It's so pretty. Look at that. Did you see that rogue dimensional cover? Going crazy. Dang it. Come here. Come here. All right. And this is our last flare. Don't get in a hurry to put your dimensionals down. You don't have to hurry. Stop it. Stop it. There we go. All right, and then we'll just hold him down a little bit. Okay. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to set him aside, and I'm going to emboss our sentiment. What kind of tweezers are these? These are uh, EK tools, and they're called reverse tweezers, so... In a, re in a regular tweezer, when you press the edges, it um, closes. But in a reverse tweezer, when you press the edges, it opens. And I got them, got it on Amazon. And they're my bestest tool, really. I mean, you know, multi-purpose glue and my reverse tweezers are going to the deserted island with me. That's just straight up. Okay, now this one's going to be scary. Let's see if I can uh, emboss this sentiment without making a fool of myself. I uh, cut this, this is Stitch So Sweetly dye, and I'm going to emboss this in, thanks Lynn. I'm going to emboss this in shimmer white embossing. Let me get a spin, a spin. See, I've discovered a new embossing fold, uh, powder holder. This used to be a sandwich meat holder from like, Hillshire Farms. Yeah, and they work pretty good. Wouldn't work if I was still traveling. Absolutely would not work if I was still traveling. But, well, I mean, it would work, but I would have embossing powder everywhere in my suitcase. Okay, so I'm using the sentiment that says friendship refreshes the soul. I've used my embossing buddy. I'm going to go ahead and pull this back to me just a little bit. If it's out of the frame, I'm sorry, but I want it to be have as much opportunity to be straight as possible and I'm holding it a second to let the ink get in take a look it looks good cover up my let me ask you a question have any of you ever put your embossing powder on and with your Versamark sitting open like this blown on it yeah I have and then I bought a new embossing powder pad because yeah okay so I'm just gonna give that a little sh a little sprinkle and a little flick and a little bow little bow yes 
Deborah, you are correct. They are like having a third hand. Because, oh, by the way, what we're referring to here, let me just show you. If you had, if you were making like, for example, a double loop bow, you could twist your thread, catch it with your reverse tweezer and set it down and then you can play with it and do what you need to do. So yes, it's exactly like having a third hand. And oh, by the way, this one doesn't have any arthritis. Mm -mm, doesn't, oh, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and heat emboss this. Gonna get loud here for just a second. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna say I've ever done that, but I've so done that. God knows. And it just goes, I mean, it's worse. It's, it's like dropping a whole thing of sequins. Oh my goodness. Look how pretty this shimmer white is. Isn't that nice? All right. It worked, it worked. Yeah, had to buy a new pad. Okay, so now all that remains for the card front is to adhere this, and I'm gonna use more of my little black dimensionals. The only problem is I need to be picking these up with my tweezers or a take your pick or something, because my fat fingers do not like picking those little ones up. All right. In fact, I'm just gonna go. Now, I what you wanna do on this is you only wanna put dimensionals up on the top and the bottom, because you want the uh, ribbon to slide through there. As a matter of fact, that worked out well, because in my first iteration, I used um, some mint macaron ribbon and I didn't love it so I just pulled it out and then I was able to slide the Rococo Rose in in my little channel. It was like a little channel. It was awesome. Yes, you guys see the finished product but <laughs> for me it's seldom the first product. Okay, here we go. Now we're just going to make sure this is straight on our card front. There we go, and centered over the top of our ribbon. And then I will finish off with my last Pretty Peacock gems from the Noble Peacock Rhinestones pack. And I'm going to put them in where those um, berries are, which is when it really starts to look like plants from Pandora to me, because I remember them being all like shiny and stuff. Am I remembering right? I think I'm remembering right. Okay. I think we'll just put one there and we'll put one here. And then I'm gonna put one right here, right there on the sentimente. And that is the card front. See, very, very simple, very stark, but with really nice little pops of color and my little ginkgos. Can you see how they're all sticking up? Funny. Eh? See ya, Jenny. Uh oh, hope to see you. Oh no, Jenny, if you're having surgery, good luck. Good luck. All right, let's do the innards. Let's do an innards, shall we? Okay, now. To do the innards, the first thing I'm going to do is pull my Stampopotamus back out. And we're going to do a Whisper White panel. And let me clean him off so I can reposition him. Alrighty. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Marianne. I'm gonna clean this. Photopolymer loves embossing powder. Have you noticed? Just saying. Oops. The attack of the killer magnets. All right, now this one, I'm just gonna put it down in the corner like so. And we're gonna put him and see if I can still close it. Yep, okay. 
and we're going to emboss him. And while I'm at it, I'll do my envelope so that we only have to pull Mr. Stamparatus out one more time. Make sure I've got a good image here. Yep, I can see that it is good. So we'll take him aside and sprinkle some gold on him. Thank you, Daryl. Appreciate you. So, kind of a kind of a sneak peek for you. This is for this week's um, paper players challenge, and the challenge is heat embossing. Now look, can you see how much excess I've got? I'm gonna go ahead and just use my brush to help those little extra pieces get away from there. Sometimes all they need is a little help getting loosened up and have another little flick. And there we go, okay. And I'm gonna set him aside and pull up my envelope and do him as well. Now, I think what I can do is just put my envelope where I want it instead of moving my stamp again. Okay, and we'll get him a little, I think I didn't do this on my white one, is what happened, that's what happened. That is my story and I'm sticking to it. All right, thanks, Diane. I really like this image in this uh, beautifully braided set. It's very pretty. Bar party. Bar party. Okay, you go sit over there. Come back here, Mr. Gold Embossing Powder. I am discovering that flicking not as easy as it used to be. <laughs> kind of painful. Okay, gonna get noisy one more time and then I promise we'll be done with the noise, okay? I promise, I promise you. I know you guys like watching this. Is it like watching cement dry a little bit? Hey, guess what's coming on Tuesday? Woohoo! Whoop, whoop! Second release of the celebration. I got a card made for Monday that's going to show one of the cute new sets, the Rise and Shine set. I think you're going to like it. I know you're going to like the stamp set. I hope you like the card. All right, there's that. And then we'll do the uh, innards here. Not the cleanest embossing I've ever done, but we're going to be okay with it. All right, so while I'm waiting for that to cool off, I'm going to just stamp thank you in uh, Rococo Rose. Rococo Rose. That is not Rococo Rose. Where did you go? There you are, Rococo. And then we're gonna do a quickie little colory. A quickie little colory. A little colory. All right. So again, I'm using the uh, dark mint macaron and I'm coloring between the lines. Stay within the lines. And we'll just color the whole thing in mint macaron to start with. And then we'll come back and just do a couple of little lines here and there with the uh, light pretty peacock. And 
will be done. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Man, we got dead air. If I was a radio radio disc jockey, I'd be getting like, you know, uh, I'd be getting yelled at by the station manager. Death Ridge, we've got dead air. I'd be like, but I'm coloring. I have to have dead air for coloring. Okay, now on my envelope, remember my little tip, stick an acetate or a piece of plastic or something into your envelope so that you're, when you're doing Stampin' Blends, so that your blends do not bleed through. And when you get close to the edge, don't color from the edge in, color edge out and raise the tip as you get to the edge and that will help avoid the uh, color bleeding to the back of the envelope which I mean you know a person could make the case that who cares but you know it's it all matters it's like the back of your cross stitch piece or anything else like that you you want to I like the back to be okay and so it bothers me when it isn't. Okay, here we go. Guys, I got a big milestone coming up soon. I hope I get there shortly. I will tell you maybe when I get there. It's exciting. Guys, realize that we are two-thirds of the way through celebration. Which means you've really only got one month, if you have any interest in joining the team, you've really only got one month left to get the big extra uh, starter kit. I mean, you can always join all year long, of course, but right now you're going to get that extra mini trimmer, the guillotine trimmer, and an extra pack of designer paper, and an extra stamp set of your choice, well, with the exception of celebration stamps or host stamps any price any catalog you can pick any additional stamp set and that's all over and above the hundred and twenty five dollars worth of product that you get for the low low price of ninety nine dollars and oh by the way shipping is free I know how everybody feels about free shipping and then of course you are dialed into the perpetual twenty to twenty five percent discount which Nobody doesn't like that. Just saying. All right, so now I'm going to come back with my um, light, pretty peacock and just add a few little highlights in here and there to give it a little Pandorian look, a little more Pandorianness. Uh, now I'm going to have to maybe have to go watch Avatar again. Avatar was a good movie, but it was there was a little preachiness about it, yeah. I think. A little preachy. A little preachy. But that's okay. Because it was pretty. I'd like to have a dragon to dr to fly around on. I, w I would like that. I don't know if I would like to be like eight feet tall and have a tail, but I would like a dragon to ride around. To fly away and fly. All right. And of course, you know how much pretty people peacock you use is totally up to you. But I wouldn't use overly much, otherwise it becomes a pretty peacock flower instead of a mint macaron and pretty peacock. And then I use this uh, to color in my little berries on this image instead of using rhinestones. There's another avatar? Hmm. I did not know that was coming. Okay. So I'm going to show you a little tiny trick. I didn't get, can you see right here, this is, I'm going to, I'm accepting the uh, kind of sloppiness here because I can, I can live with it. But this berry right here did not get a good image, 
a good emboss. So I'm taking this works with this uh, with gold embossing. I've got my soft suede Stampin' Right marker, and I'm using the fine tip end, and I'm just tapping in the uh, the edge of the image. I'm just kind of filling it in. And so that when somebody sees it, their eye sees a complete image, okay? Now I'll tell you what else I'm gonna do because I don't like the fact that I've got those uh, little dots. I'm gonna make it act like, like I meant to do that. So I'm just coming with a few dots of my Stampin' Right marker to add a little bit of doodling around the edge of the image, right? So what I did is I took a mistake and I made it look like I meant to do that. And all it did is just add a little dimension into the, the image. Nobody knows any different, right? You and I and anybody who watches this video are the only ones that know that I made a mistake there and had to fix it. But remember, it's paper and ink. Make it work for you. Because obviously the other alternative is what? toss this piece of cardstock and start new. But I felt like it was not a bad enough problem that I couldn't make it look okay. And if I really wanted to get het up about it, and I will just to show you, because I'm a het person, there's no doubt. I'm one of those headers. I head up. I head up pretty easy. Amy can attest to that. I head up pretty easy. I had a heck of a week with my computer, and it drove me pretty well crazy. I'm not going to lie, I actually had a... I had an angry orchard hard apple cider last week. I did. I just blew those 200 calories like it was nothing. Okay, now since I added my little dots there on the inside, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, do a few here on the envelope flap, or on the envelope which makes it even more likely to the average observer to think that maybe I meant to do that. They don't know. And I've done doodle dots before on cards, so it's not unusual. It's not unusual. Okay, there we go. Now, we'll add on our uh, DSP onto the envelope flappe and put our card together and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Rock and roll. Okay. There we go. Ooh, gosh, I've taken a long time, you guys. I'm sorry. I guess I got yakking, didn't I? and cutting. Here, I'll cut fast. I'll fussy cut, not so fussy. I'll do a not so fussy cut. I'm sorry. Way too much of your Saturday night. All right, there's that. Now we'll put the card together. Put the card together, together. I know, it was an entire bottle, the whole 12 ounces. I needed it. I'm just going to say I needed it really bad. And it was good. It was one of those green apple ones. It was good. I'd forgotten how good those taste. It's been a long time. All right. Okay. And then I'm going to put it in a Rococo Rose card base. Let's see. I think this was the Fab. I think this is Fab Friday's color scheme this week. So you'll see, you'll see that it's a Fab Friday when my card posts tomorrow. All right, and then we'll put some dimensionals. Again, I'm using black. You could probably use the white ones here if you wanted to, but I've got them right here in front of me. So what the heck, what the heck? I hope these stick around. I like having black dimensionals. I mean, they're, it's like your KitchenAid stand mixer. Don't need it every day. Don't need it for every card. But when you need it, you need it, you know? What I'm saying? And I think it's always fun to have them 
when you need them. I like them. Oh, Kathy, that's so sweet. <laughs> and Michelle, thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad you guys have a good time. Glad you have a good time, because otherwise, what's the point? All right, and here we go. Yeah, I'm. I love how this card turned out. It's so pretty. I love that uh, shimmery white embossing, and it's matching envelope. So there you go. I hope you will try this. Please consider getting this stamp set. Um, it's a little bit of a flyover. This is one that I think people uh, um, they miss until they get to see what you can do with it, and um, it's kind of fun. So have a good week. Oh, listen up. Next week, I am going down to a stamping event in Warner Robins, a couple of three hours south, and I will not be back in time for a video. So look for me at one o'clock on Thursday on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, but not on Saturday evening for a video. I will post some pictures from the event um, on Facebook throughout the day, so kind of watch for that. And um, we will regroup and meet again two weeks from today. All right, guys, thanks. Have a great rest of your weekend. And hey, enjoy this extra day of the year. You won't see another one for four years. All right, bye-bye, guys. Thanks. Bye.